Welcome back. So a couple weeks ago, I did a video where I head to head pinned vegan YouTubers against each other to see which lasagna was the best. And you guys loved it. So I'm so excited to be doing that again. Hi guys, I'm Candice the Edgy Veg. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget the bell notification so you don't miss out on new videos every single week. If you like these videos where I compare other chefs, other YouTubers, celebrities, recipes against each other and compare them to see which one is the best, give this video a big thumbs up. If you have any requests, you can drop them in the comment section down below. That's how I ended up with this video. Today, I'm going to tackle mac and cheese. There was an overwhelming amount of requests for mac and cheese. And I'm so excited because today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is a amazing online learning platform for creative and curious people. And they have a special deal just for you guys. So stick around. I'm going to explain a little bit on that later. So the three people that I am kind of not pitting against each other, but comparing recipes from are Lauren from Hot For Food, Janae from Sweet Potato Soul, and Tabitha Brown. These were all people that you really highly requested, I test and the amount of people that picked mac and cheese was just overwhelming. So I'm going to be judging these on a couple different things. Accessibility, are the ingredients accessible to most people? Timing, so how long is the recipe? And then of course, flavor. And again, all of these YouTubers, bloggers, TikTok stars are different levels of chefiness, so I'm not basing it kind of on that. The first recipe I'm going to tackle is Lauren from Hot For Food. The ingredients seem like they're all pretty much available anywhere. One of the harder to find ingredients is arrowroot flour, but you can sub it with tapioca flour and you probably could sub it with cornstarch as well. But nowadays I find in the organic section of the store, most of these things are available. For her mac and cheese, this is a baked mac and cheese. So it says the total time is about 58 minutes, so prep time is about 20 and then cook time is about 30. I've gone ahead and already cooked all of the pasta for everything, but the main ingredients in hers for the sauce are cashews, a shredded vegan cheese. You can use whatever your favorite vegan cheddar shreds are. Then we have some nutritional yeast, miso, which is a nice touch. It really gives that cheese the umami flavor. And then hers is baked with a breadcrumb crust, which is a little bit different than the other two. So I'm going to make the sauce. I'm going to put all of these ingredients into a blender and then we have our sauce tossed with our macaroni and baked. Easy peasy. All right, so I have a Vitamix, it's a high speed blender. I find that they are the best for blending things like cashews, but you definitely don't need it. A Nutribullet or something like that would work perfectly fine. So I have my cashews. So these have been soaked in hot water, some almond milk. I have my vegan cheddar cheese shreds, lemon juice, miso paste, vegetable oil, nutritional yeast. We have our salt, pepper, onion powder, our starch, and our tomato paste. It's a really good sauce. That's our sauce. It looks this nice kind of like red color. Kind of looks like a rose sauce. We have our pasta here. Now this is going to make a bit more than I have casserole dish for, but let's see. So the recipe does say that if it is a little bit liquidy, that's okay because it'll all firm up when it's cooking because that's what starch does. And I'm going to give this a little toss. I do like the color of it. It's this like cute pink little rosé color. It smells really good. I just gave a sauce a little taste and it is delicious. All right. She says nine by nine. I don't know what size this is, but I think volume wise, it's probably about the same. And a little tip for you, if you are concerned about anything bubbling over, and this is really with any recipe that you make in the oven, just put a little baking sheet underneath it. Same with if you were to make like a French onion soup or something. So that fit almost perfectly. Cover it with foil and then it says bake for 20 minutes. I'm sure if you have one of those dishes with a lid, then you don't need the foil. All right, the second one I'm doing is Janae's recipe from Sweet Potato Soul. This one, the prep time is about 30 minutes, cook time is about 20, so the total time is 50 minutes. Most of that cook time is in the oven, which is perfect because we can put it in with the other one. So the sauce ingredients for this guy, butternut squash, it looks like roasted garlic, 
air root powder. So again, you can sub cornstarch if you want to. Non-dairy milk, she used organic soy, so that's what we used. Dijon mustard, onion powder. So a lot of the same ingredients, except she uses a lot more nutritional yeast and also has the addition of roasted squash, which is super tasty. And then what makes hers very different is that she also includes Brussels sprouts. I love. I mean, what a great way to get your greens. And also when Brussels sprouts are like cooked and coated, mm, they have just this crunchy like chip-like texture, which I'm really excited for in, in a mac and cheese. Again, I've already gone ahead and cooked the pasta. I'm gonna go ahead and melt the butter first. So this is just a normal plant-based margarine. So while that is melting, I'm going to take my starch and just add it to about a third cup of the soy milk. To my melted butter, I am going to add my soy milk. So we have our soy milk, salt and onion powder, lemon juice. We have some Dijon mustard here, and then our nutritional yeast. Let me give that a good stir. All right, now I'm going to whisk in this starchy soy milk mixture. All right, I am going to cook this for about three minutes or until it is thickened. All right, what you should end up with is kind of this, I don't know, thick. <laughs> she tick. Which I am now going to blend together with the roasted butternut squash and also a roasted clove of garlic. This is already quite good as a sauce as it is, so I'm really excited to see what kind of depth of flavor we are going to get from the squash. I thought it was going to be maybe a bit too nutritionally yeasty, but it's not. We have our roasted garlic and then our squash. And just give that a blend until it's smooth. I'm going to go ahead and taste for salt. Mm. Perfect. That's really good. I'm just going to mix everything in this pot because it has sides, so it'll be easier instead of getting noodles and sauce all over the place. And then pour on your sauce. Oh, it's very thick. Ooh. Ah. So this one is more of a like pale yellowy orange, almost like a Dijon color. And then toss the noodles with the sauce. Make sure they're all coated. No one wants to be left out of a cheesy party. All right, mix that around and throw it into a casserole dish. All right, adding our mac and cheese. I like to do everything with one of these spatulas just because you can really get everything off the side of your pot or plate. I chose kind of a taller one for this mac and cheese because we're adding a layer of the Brussels sprouts. Just kind of flatten that out. Now Janae says to add a tablespoon of olive oil to the Brussels sprouts, massage them, with a little bit of salt as well, and then throw them on top. I think I'm going to end up using a little bit more olive oil just because I like mine to be super crispy. Hello. How am I supposed to massage you in such a small bowl? So I started watching like three different British TV shows all at the same time. So randomly I will just start speaking in really different weird British accents in different areas. And I'm not very good at either of them. I'm probably just going to insult people if I continue to do it. Has that, that ever happened to anyone? start watching a show and they have an accent, you start just doing the accent and talking to your pets in that accent. I'm just gonna add the Brussels sprouts on top. All right, I'm adding a couple of chili flakes. If you don't like any heat at all, you can just skip this. Let's throw her in. This is the greenest mac and cheese I've ever seen. All right, so she bakes this for 20 minutes at 375. All right, our third mac and cheese recipe comes from the one and only Tabitha Brown. This one is more like the quick style. So she doesn't have any ingredients listed anywhere. So I just watched the video and kind of guessed. So I just kind of like guessed with everything. I used about three cups of pa macaroni pasta for everybody else, so pretty much did the same thing here. She uses half a package of both mozzarella and cheddar cheese shreds. So I just went out and just whatever I found, I have those. And then she uses yogurt in hers, which I think is very interesting. And then she also uses potato and butternut squash, which I also love. So it's kind of like a tradi more traditional, like melting the cheese shreds that you buy at the store. The first step that she has is to just mash the potato and squash. While I'm mashing this, I have a 
nice generous helping of vegan butter melting in my large pot. So I'm guessing about half a cup. And then I also kind of guessed that it was about a quarter cup of nutritional yeast and about like three quarter cups of the non-dairy yogurt. Now, when you are getting the yogurt, make sure that you buy unsweetened. To the mash, she mashes it with just some garlic and herb seasoning. This is like a salt-free seasoning blend. So it looks like there's tons of that. Our butter is melted. Now I'm going to add the potato and squash mixture. Mix around and then I'm going to add my nutritional yeast. Do the mix around with that. Oh my God, it smells so good in here. Just everything. I have mac and cheese in the oven. I have just the, this beautiful garlic smell in here and just butter smells delicious. All right, now yogurt, or in German, joghurt. And then some garlic powder. I am the most excited, I think, to try Tabitha's recipe because of the yogurt. I just think that's such an interesting and quite frankly, brilliant way to make vegan cheese because you get that like souriness that sometimes cheese has. That around and then just some broth. I'm guessing about a cup. So I'm adding a little bit of starch to it just to help thicken it up a little bit. This is not in her recipe, but I want the end result to be delicious. And I just kind of guessed. So that should help thicken it up. All right, I have my breadcrumbs with my oregano, basil. I don't have vegan Parmesan, so I didn't use that. I think I probably would have tossed this with some vegan butter just to give it more of like that fried crackly taste. See you in 10 minutes. And now a word from our sponsor. So like I said earlier, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. It is an awesome online learning community and they have thousands of amazing courses that you can take for anything that you, you know, want to be creative in, anything that you're curious about. So I am in a home filled with plants. You guys know this, you've seen it on my Instagram. While I have a lot of plants, I don't actually know much about why they're good for me in any way or like I, I kind of guess and pick and choose about like lighting and things. So the Plants at Home course by Christopher Griffin is a course that I just took that I love. He explores the positive power of plants, assessing your space and where to put your plants, finding your perfect plant. So if you are not like me and you can't keep a plant alive, that's a great section for you. So again, if you are new to plants, that's a great one for you. I had a plant that just wasn't doing well and we couldn't figure it out. And then we found out that it had root rot. So there you go. So Skillshare has a wonderful special deal just for edgy veg subscribers. So the first thousand people to hit the link in the description box down below, get a free premium trial. And then after that, it's only about $10 a month. I mean, we're all locked at home. And if you want to do something with your time that isn't just scrolling through your Instagram or watching another thing on Netflix, learn something new with me. Now we're back at Tabitha's. I am just going to add the pasta. There's no baking or anything to this. It's so cheesy. This is delicious already. All right, I'm going to spoon this into bowls. Lauren's is almost done and Janae's is finished so we can do a taste test. All right, so Tabitha recommends serving it with paprika on top. Smoked, she said, but I only have regular. So that's what I'm going to use. Gorgeous. It's time for our taste test. Which one do you want to try first? I think I'm gonna try the Brussels sprout one. Okay. Which one's supposed to be the healthiest? I don't know, probably the Brussels sprout one because it has greens in it. It's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit drier than I would like. Is this the one with the roasted garlic in it? Mm -hmm. You can tell. It's a really good flavor. I like the crunchiness of the Brussels sprouts. If you're not big on like the nooch flavor though, mm -hmm. it might be a lot. Yeah, it's really good. My only critique, I think, are two things. I would like it to be like more wet. Like it's saucy. a little saucy. Yeah. Thank you, more wet. <laughs> and then I think if I was to do Brussels sprouts, I would fry them first in the oil and then put them on after. All right, should we try Lauren's? Yeah, it's so like red orange. Okay, going from Janae's that is like super flavorful to this one, probably wasn't a great idea because now it kind of tastes a little buoyant, but I like how saucy it is. Mm -hmm. It's really creamy. Very, very creamy. I don't know what I'm, it's a tomato. I'm like, why does it taste a little bit sweet? I, I like it. Mm -hmm. It's just a little too tomatoey for me, I think. My critique for this one would be that I would mix the breadcrumbs with oil or butter. Right. So that they crisp, because they just kind of like sit on top there. Yeah, or bake them longer. I thought that would be. 
Yeah, because that was 10 minutes. No, I like it. It's just the color isn't like scream mac and cheese to me. This oh. one's very saucy. Yeah, wow. And like pulley. This reminds me of like pub mac and cheese mm -hmm. with like the different types of cheese. It's really good. It has the most like vegan cheese shreds in it though. Mm -hmm. The flavor isn't overwhelming. Like it doesn't have a ton of nutritional yeast flavor in it, which I like. But you can't taste the butternut squash. So if you're trying to get secret vegetables, that's... Yes. It could be a little bit saltier. I mean, I like baked mac and cheese. So maybe yeah. try to bake it, but... I mean, for not baked mac and cheese. I mean, just for mac and cheese in general, it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. I would have to agree, I would bake it. Which one was your favorite, like right off the bat? I think my favorite is the Brussels sprout one, mm. which is the sweet potato sole one. Yeah. And it's based on an Oshi oh, Glows mac and cheese. Oh. So that's yeah. a secret for YouTuber we just <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite is Tabitha's, just because it's so saucy mm -hmm. and like you have that pull. In terms of ease of ingredients, you can mainly get all of these ingredients everywhere. This is definitely the fastest. Tabitha's is the fastest because there's no baking involved. I guess if you were to bake it, it would be about the same time as the rest of these. I would also say that it's the easiest mainly because you're just boiling potatoes and boiling squash and then throwing it into a pan. Like it's super quick and easy. Hot for foods is definitely the creamiest. I think I would, you know what I would do? I would cut down the tomato paste. I don't know, try all of them. <laughs> Make them at home and you decide. I mean, you said that your favorite is Janae's and I said my favorite is Tabitha's. So you just have to decide who you're going to go with on that one. 